doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor. We know from a regulatory standpoint, you know, we, we, we're trying to sort of catch, catch all, but before I sort of go into the scope three, I wonder if anyone knows what, um, if you could have a picture in your mind, what sustainable finance looks like. There you have it. <laughs> there you have it. This man was talking about sustainable finance, creating structures before we even knew what it was going into parts of um, you know, this globe that were very unpopular. Um, he's probably got many scars on his back and uh, many stories to share with us over a glass of wine, I'm sure. Um, but, but we're very uh, pleased to have you with us and uh, we, we're very pleased that you've now gone from the asset owner, um, effectively as the former head of uh, Treasury for the World Bank uh, Group globally, now into the vice chair role of the International uh, uh, sustainability um, board so you know the ISSB so we think that so so congratulations on that first uh, first of all but I was intrigued and interested to see your focus now on or one of the focuses being on scope three and it'll be great hot off the press to get your views on that in particularly in the context of you know emerging markets um, you know the just transition investors alliance and how that might contribute towards companies looking favorably on these issues Well, thank you so much uh, for inviting me and congratulations on the launch of the Just Transition Investor Alliance. Uh, you know, it takes all of us to walk together to go very far. And Hoover, last we met in Gavrani, Botswana, mm -hmm. when we were discussing how S African Sovereign Wealth Fund can support Africa's development. So I think we are all in together. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I spent the last almost three decades working in international development, capital market innovation. But last month's uh, talk on the new role as the vice chair of the International Sustainability Standard Board. So bear with me, let me just introduce a bit of background and uh, hopefully relate to uh, the important topic we are uh, today. So rough figures, annual global GDP is about $80 trillion. And our population is going to go to 8 billion. You divide the total GDP every year by the population, it's $10,000 per head, right? In a just world, everybody could enjoy a middle-class life. Thank you. But the reality is so different, right? From my angle, as an investor, as manager of assets, by the way, I was also head of the, the pension fund for the World Bank. How do we make global capital market uh, work better for just transition? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in my neuro, I would say, what gets measured gets done, and therefore, the launch of the uh, ISSB at COP26, I think, is an important step in terms of making a global standard for companies to disclose what they are doing on sustainability matters, material matters, right, that will affect the company's value. So we are working on the first two standards, a general requirement, generally under the TCD architecture, but also working on the second standard called the climate-related standard. Hopefully by sometime next year, these standards will be formalized, then each country regulator or jurisdiction will start to adopt. I'm here to argue early adoption by African jurisdictions will put African countries on the map to be eligible for international investors, mm. therefore affecting global capital allocation in a positive way. Why do I say that? Let me just say the UNPRI, which is, is the Alliance of Responsible Investment Principle, now represents over $120 trillion of assets. So when they invest in a company where they not only measure financial performance, but sustainability matters, right, ESG, risk and opportunity, they will say, does this company report on sustainability matter? Do we have a global standard that I can compare their performances, right? Mm -hmm. So with the introduction of our, of our standard, with early adoption by African jurisdiction, Africa companies 
will be eligible because now they they disclose their sustainability matters uh, in conformity to a, to a new global standard. So this is in general the big picture we are working on. So watch our work at IFRS. The credibility we bring because the, the global financial market works on trust, transparency, and efficiency, right? The credibility of the ISSB is on the, on the fact that we are a sister board of the International Accounting Standard Board, mm -hmm. which for the past 20 years this process, now over 160 countries use international accounting standard, therefore making investors' job easy when they do financial analysis of the uh, of financial disclosure across different countries. What IASB has done is what ISSB is doing for sustainability, mm -hmm. right? When it comes to scope three, I, I don't want to go into detail because you are all experts, that we made a decision in shaping the future standards that scope three should be reported in addition to scope one and scope two, but recognizing there is a gap there in terms of readiness, data availability, so on and so forth, we will provide relief and then safe harbor with each jurisdiction. So there is a due process. But here is where at COP27, we are launching a global partnership for capacity building, mm -hmm. making sure we not only make the standard, we also make capacity building for the global south an integral part of our promise mm -hmm. so that implementation does not only uh, uh, you know, uh, become easy for the global north, but global south will be ready mm -hmm. to adopt too. So, so this is really, in a nutshell, the high level uh, uh, um, you know, overview. Let me just come back to say that uh, since COP27 is in Africa, it's putting a spotlight on the opportunities and, and possibilities of Africa. And I started my international career in Abidjan working for the African Union Bank almost 30 years ago. This is the continent of my passion. I definitely think that once Africa companies start to disclose what they're doing in terms of transition, uh, climate resilience, you know, social issues, investors will start to invest in Africa uh, and therefore we will be able to unlock a much bigger amount of uh, investment to enable just transition. So happy to answer questions, but let me just stop here. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.